This past week, I participated in the VR Jam 2020, a one-week jam hosted by popular VR developers Valem and VR with Andrew. I had been watching their videos for quite some time, as I've mainly focused on VR development over the last couple of years. So I decided to join this jam to sharpen my VR skills and learn more about the new Unity XR framework which I had never personally used in a project. Over the course of the week, there were a lot of things that I could have done better and spent more time focusing on, but overall I had a great experience and I learned a lot of new skills. So let's dive into this week-long game making journey. The jam started on May 1st at 1pm EST and I was pleasantly surprised at the mention of the theme One Tool Many Uses. In VR, this kind of theme is applicable to so many different uses because in VR, your main source of interaction is through your hands. I started to think of some cool ideas like using crutches to walk but also swinging them to do karate chops at incoming enemies. But I really wanted an idea to make good use of the theme and I didn't really see myself making that game. After some thinking, it hit me. Hands. The hands are the tools themselves, and according to the Oxford Scholarship, they can be considered the tool of tools. From there on, I decided to make a god simulator game, where your hands were tools of creation that could make land, people, animals, and nature. I took inspiration from two existing games, Diism and Super God Island VR. However, I mainly took inspiration from Diism, where you throw down your land to expand it, and also you throw down weather effects and other cool items. Unfortunately, I wasn't able to implement weather effects on time, but I'm pretty happy with the result. But anyways, let's get started on the dev journey. On the first day, I decided to generate a plane from scratch using code. The idea was to later alter the mesh to have procedurally generated planes. So if you wanted to put down a mountain, it would randomize that mountain once you put it down. However, I ended up not having enough time to do so. This was a good lesson on focusing on the MVP or minimum viable product instead of overcomplicating it. So to start, I made a grid tile script that generated a plane through math. It was actually pretty simple, especially with the help of cat-like coding tutorial. For a mesh, you need several inputs, a vertices array, a triangle array, and a UV array, which helps match 2D textures onto a 3D mesh. The vertices and UV array is a simple double for loop going through the size you want to make the mesh, or in my case, the plane. Since I wanted to make the plane face upwards in the Y direction, I set the Y vertex to zero. The UV vertex is set to the position of the vertex divided by the grid size to make sure the texture fits correctly inside of the grid. Then, you generate the triangles using the vertices. Triangles are rendered clockwise in Unity, and there are two triangles per square, so it becomes a process of assigning the vertices in the correct order to the array. And bam! I mean, <laughs> bam, here's a generated mesh. After that, I made a grid manager to spawn many of them in a grid-like fashion. Today I focused on making VR functionality work with the app. I really wanted to make it available for both PC and Quest, so I decided to use the legacy version of the XR input system, as the new version does not yet support OpenVR, which is what Valve and Vive uses. By the way, if you want to try out this new XR interaction toolkit, you need to have Unity version 2019.3 or above. For this, I followed Valem's awesome tutorial on setting up custom hands, and voila! I had custom hands working in Unity. He also showed how to get input using the controllers, which was super useful. I also followed his tutorial on teleporting in VR, but sadly I didn't end up using that feature in the game. After I got VR working, I started to make a state machine for the NPC or non-player character. The NPC would go around the land once the land was placed, and I wanted it to react to whatever the player did. A state machine is commonly used for AI to define states that it should have and how it should move between those states. However, once again, this is a feature that I did not end up fully using in the end product, but it was a very useful experience to learn. I followed this tutorial on how to use a state machine with Unity's features properly. There was a main state machine class that takes in a generic property and then changes a state based on the input from the current state. Then I defined a separate class for each of my states that inherited from the state machine. In this case, I only ended up with one state, which is why this ended up being kind of useless. In each separate class, I would implement the required functions by the parent class. 
These topics might be a little complicated for a beginner, but I will probably be making videos on this in the future. So if you're interested, please subscribe to learn more about these cool topics. So going back to the state machine, each state had an update state method that would be called by the non-player character or NPC class. The NPC class instantiates the state machine and the different states, and then it calls the state machine update function, which would then update the non-player character depending on their state on every frame. Knowing that my time to submit was shortening, I started working on the main mechanics of the game. Probably a little later than I'd like to, but, you know, game jam. The main interaction was going to be the menu where you could spawn items. Thus, I decided to design a pull-out menu where you could later grab items and it would hide itself when you do. Then you can throw the item wherever you want, which I thought was a pretty cool feature. This menu gave me the hardest time to implement, as I wanted to create a custom menu using the pre-existing XR interactions such as the socket. What a socket does, it acts as a placeholder for items, and the items will stay in the socket until you pull it out. I wrote my own socket script thinking that there was no way the XR socket could have an object be placed back in the socket without actually grabbing the item and putting it back in the socket. However, I soon found out that if you moved an object close to the socket, even if it wasn't being grabbed, it would automatically attach itself. I did waste a lot of time writing my own socket implementation, it was full of bugs, and if I actually took more time to test the existing implementations carefully, instead of going off and spending hours doing the same thing, I could have probably saved a lot of time. But anyways, all's well that ends well. The menu was now able to spawn land, water, mountain, along with a cow, pig, and two types of barns. Ah! The deadline was getting close and I still had most of the main functionality missing. Today I decided to spawn the NPCs when the land was put down and have them walk around using a navigation mesh. I used Unity's navigation mesh component available on GitHub to generate the nav mesh on runtime. I didn't have much experience with nav meshes, so it took me quite some time to set this up. I wanted the nav meshes to link together so the NPCs could walk between them. It turns out that Unity does take care of that for you once you call one function in your script. I also fixed the NPC AI because they weren't wandering around the land correctly. I asked someone on the Valem Discord channel and it turns out it was because I had static states, meaning that only one NPC could use the state machine at a time, and voila! After quickly fixing that, it worked. The last two days, I wanted to focus on polishing the movement, the menu, and the overall look of the game. I added a skybox and followed some tutorials using Shader Graph to make a custom water and mountain shader. I also added haptics when grabbing and sound effects when things were placed on the grid. The game was looking pretty good so far. I polished the movement so that the user could move sideways, forwards, up and down, and quickly snap to change directions. The snap is already built in with the XR Interaction Toolkit, thankfully. I then implemented the actual win and lose logic of the game. Since I was running out of time, I decided to make the player have two energies, nature and prayer. You receive the nature energy by putting down more land and trees, and the prayer energy by giving the NPCs houses and animals. If any of those two energies drops to zero, you lose. However, if you're able to expand to all the lands, and in my case, I put around 36 tiles, you win. I placed a user interface component, a UI component, on each of the player's hands so they can see how much energy or power they had left. I also tried to get a ragdoll working so you can interact with the NPCs and throw them, but it kept glitching out and time was running out so I scrapped that. But it was pretty useful to learn how to do it. I also fixed the menu it's head and scrapped being able to put weather events down like rain, hurricanes, and fire. Lastly, I added a simple UI button that the user could press once they won or lost to restart the game. I could have saved a lot of time by just quickly prototyping instead of trying to design custom components or overcomplicating several features. However, now I'm comfortable with the new Unity XR input and interaction system, and I learned about mesh generation, state machines, how namespaces work, and how events are used in Unity, and I was able to put out a VR game in a week. That sounds like a success to me. If you guys enjoyed this video, drop a like and subscribe to be updated on future content. I plan on making a video soon on an introduction to Unity, so if you're interested, be sure to subscribe to notifications with the little bell.
Thanks, and see you next time.